when the kids start studying U.S. history, I thought they might be interested in some of the events that I remember. Uh, I thought I'd start with the Cuban Missile Crisis in October of 1962. Uh, I was 13 years old at the time and didn't follow the news closely. But one night, President Kennedy came on the TV and said that the USSR, under Nikita Khrushchev, was sending a fleet of warships and transports containing nuclear missiles to Cuba. Uh, this was a situation the U.S. couldn't accept because missiles launched from Cuba would impact the United States within minutes and there would be no warning. Fidel Castro, the Cuban leader, said he needed the missiles because he believed that the United States was planning to invade his country. And the USSR provided the nuclear missiles to Cuba to retaliate if the U.S. took action against him. It was at the height of the Cold War. I remember being in school and preparing. All of us practiced getting under our desks and covering our heads in case of attack we were told we might see a bright flash of light in the distance but not to stare at it. Of course what they didn't tell us was that if we saw the flash and survived uh, we might die later from radiation poisoning and that would be far worse than being vaporized. We lived with the constant knowledge that we could be attacked at any time as did the people of USSR. Uh, one crazy leader or a military mistake could mean the end of our world. Both the U.S. and the USSR had enough nuclear missiles to destroy each other many times over. Uh, at 13, I understood that concept very well. Uh, the best hope we had was a military concept known as MAD, M-A-D, which stood for Mutual Assured Destruction. The theory was that if one side launched the missiles they had, the other side would launch everything they had and both countries would end up being totally destroyed. Uh, the missiles would literally pass each other on the way to their targets. When, when they hit, each country would be destroyed, not by the hundreds of nuclear impacts necessarily, but by the massive amount of radiation that would be thrown into the atmosphere and, and cover the entire earth which scientists called a nuclear winner. Hence, MAD worked for both sides, and both sides understood that neither could launch an attack and hope to survive. Over the next week, I watched TV every night as the news showed pictures of the Russian ships making their way close to Cuba over the Atlantic Ocean. President Kennedy came back on TV and announced the U.S. would impose a naval blockade around Cuba and no ships with offensive weapons of any kind would be allowed to pass. He also said he would sink any ship from any nation which tried to run the blockade without submitting to inspection. The United States warships surrounded Cuba and the ships from the USSR were only about two days away. We carried on with our lives, but everyone realized that this was not a movie. Our experience could be the end of the world. The two mightiest militaries on earth, each capable of destroying each other, were on a collision course. The confrontation seemed impossible to avoid because neither side gave any indication of backing down. I think most Americans accepted as I did that that things were simply out of our hands and we just hoped for the best. The ships from the USSR stopped just outside the exclusion zone. Talks were going on, but that's all the government would say. I'm not sure how long it was, but after several days we were told that the USSR and the United States had reached a compromise. The US agreed that it would not attack Cuba unless Cuba attacked first. The USSR said it would send its fleet back home without delivering any offensive weapons and they would remove the missiles that were currently in Cuba. The United States had pictures of the Russian missiles in Cuba 
which Russia had been able to sneak in earlier in the year. It sounded like the United States won because we didn't think our government would invade Cuba without provocation anyway. I remember thinking that the USSR had backed down and I wondered why. What the American people were not told is that President Kennedy had secretly agreed to remove U.S. missiles from Turkey, which was an ally. Those missiles could reach almost every part of the USSR. It was a major concession that our government kept secret from the public in the Cold War environment. The USSR ships were recalled and headed home. The few missiles already in Cuba were removed. The United States upheld a secret agreement and took our missiles out of Turkey. The U.S. avoided nuclear missiles in Cuba, but the USSR had won a large concession. In the end, life returned to normal, and the status quo of MAD, which still exists today, continued. The Cuban Missile Crisis is probably the closest that mankind has ever come to destroying the world, at least so far.